Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about UI development and um, some tips and tricks you might want to know if you want to get into uh, UI development role or UI work, right? If you have experience, you might already know this stuff, but I think it's pretty cool and I'm making it uh, for the benefit of those people who don't or who are new here. Um, so the primary thing I want to focus on is the F12 or the developer tools in whatever browser you're using. Um, it could be Google Chrome or it could be Safari or Firefox or whatever. Um, every browser has its own version of uh, developer tools and really helps you to find out um, what's going wrong in the web page or just uh, this video is to show you how F12 works how the um, UI debugging tool works okay so let's get into it um, this is Google Chrome I have the home page open I'm going to right click click inspect and on the right hand side you see a bunch of stuff opens up right this entire thing is the ui debugging tool and you have elements you have console you have sources you have network performance memory application and security right so the most uh, you also have lighthouse and ad block right um the most important ones of here is elements console sources network right these four are the ones that you will need and um, these four are the ones that you will care about uh, once you start writing ui code so so the elements tab is basically the literal html render of everything that is on your screen Right, so there's this uh, button here which you can click and then you could select an element on the screen. So this is a div um, of type logo, right? You can see the background color is that EEEE -E -E, uh, num code, right? Um, that also happens to be the exact color of the word Google in this page, which is why the background is like that. And then you could go here this is the input bar or the search bar right and on the right hand side you can see a thing being highlighted this thing right here this is it should like this for example right here this HTTP real box ID real box is the input box right so every HTML element on the right hand side of the screen basically points to um, uh, a real element on um, on the left so now um, you may wonder that okay this looks like a pretty complicated uh, HTML page so um, like where does this all come from like where is this code coming from right so that is an that's a good question and so to understand how this page shows up in the first place and how all this is happening we have to go to the sources tab okay so if you're not familiar with development of web apps or web development this structure or like um like stuff like this may not make sense to you but these are basically the resources that are needed to run a web app right so you have a bunch of um so here um you can see some js files and um there's a css file over here and you have uh some icons you can see 
So you can see that these icons which loaded here are actually my shortcuts on the left. So you can see dashboard, YouTube, Google Keep, stuff like that. So that is uh, what basically uh, loaded here. And then you have other resources like images. And then this is the plus sign I'm guessing on the top. Um, and this is, the, this is the three dots for the menu and stuff like that. So all of these are like pictures. Okay, I'm not sure what this is, but um, all of these are like pictures or JavaScript files or CSS files or stuff like that, which is needed to render the HTML page. So the stuff you see here is you can see the you know what this is, right? This icon is um, so that's the microphone and this is the Google logo, right? Um, stuff like that. So these things are like a folder of images, right? Which are referenced from the HTML in this file. Okay. So when you see stuff like source equals this or image equals that, right? And you're wondering where is the image coming from? So the image is coming from here. You can, you can see it in sources, right? But then other than that, yeah, um, let's stay on target. And what I was about to show you is where all this information, where these HTML files and these JS files, right? Where this stuff comes from, right? That's the question. You're wondering, okay, how did I even get this data or get this stuff? Where did it come from, right? I'll show you. So this... Uh, is the net is the network tab and the stuff that you see here might not make sense to you initially and that's fine but i'll give you an example of what this does all right so i'm gonna go ahead and search something um there we go i'm gonna search for pewdiepie and then on the left is the actual web page which loads up right and this is, this is a search page um, you have some stuff here some stuff here right all of that and then on the right you see a never-ending list of things which um, pop up right and um, probably wondering what is all this stuff right so every um, entry in the network tab is basically a, a data transfer action between your browser and a server or or something wherever i mean the the website right in this case it's it's google right so in order to render this website on your browser your browser needs all this information right in this case it would need um these pictures that you see here it would need these links uh their little you know sub information whatever captions or whatever these are like youtube um recommendations you have some movies um people also search for it whatever like you need this information to be able to render this stuff on this page right so that information comes in small tidbits bite-sized chunks from the stuff you see on the right so every row here is basically one transfer of information to from or I mean both ways kind of um, in from your browser right to from from a server where the information is, is, is coming from. So if you look at the stuff on the type you can kind of get an idea of what this stuff is jpeg is images and then svg plus um svg plus xml is basically an an, an image as well but it's just encoded different um pngs jpegs and lots of other stuff right but the thing that you will most likely be concerned about is this thing called xhr okay so if you click this button on top you can sort your entries or rows by their type and you can you know 
if you wanted that and what you will be concerned about most of the time is XHR which is data so JS is JavaScript CSS images media blah 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 right XHR is basically JSON and it's it's the part of the web page that stores the actual information so in this case it would be you know PewDiePie Swedish youtuber and the, it would be the links and the information about the links it would be these right it would be uh, this data and like so on and so forth it would be these images and their links right like where is it is the the main source of the information that shows on the page right the main data so if you click on the first one right you see a bunch of stuff here um don't let that confuse you go to the preview okay the preview shows you i think this stuff is some algorithm that google uses to index searches and stuff like that so these numbers correspond to maybe how frequently you have searched this word or, or something like that um you have a response and then the response looks like a giant string right but i'm gonna make it easy for you and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna open an id and uh, in my id i'm gonna create a separate file called test json rather test or json uh no i don't want to add that and probably gonna put that like here yeah so i have a file and then this is the in the dump of data which you got from, from there there is a way to there we go um yeah so what i've done is i've copied that dump of information from google and i've put it here and i have formatted it so let's take a look at what's inside so you have pewdiepie which is the search term so you have pewdiepie and you have swedish youtuber which is the information that appears here on top right um okay so now see you have markiplier you have mr beast you have jacksepticeye logan paul jake paul right dude perfect now these are all other youtubers and these occur here when you do people also search for this is where that information appears okay that's where that's coming from um if you click this button you could see see the whole list this is dan tdm whatever right and then coco is dan tdm ksi and then uh, yeah it's 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 just these right ordered in a particular way so this entire uh, json just contains basically what pewdiepie is what his search result is and contains a list of similar search results based on their attributes right and uh, while you may you while your page is loaded with PewDiePie and his his information right you can see other recommended things here which show up right this could also be applicable for a movie if you searched for a Disney movie you'd probably see other recommendations for other Disney movies on top right and then like what google does is it searches for your one and then like it has a database where it looks at matching parameters between your search object and other objects available and it returns other similar objects right in this case we have a list of youtubers right so that's how um that works and then that's the information given to you by the first data point right now um perfect we have an error here on our console right let's look at this error play.google blah 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 
and uh, 400 that's it that's a bad request right um so i'll talk to you a little bit um about what the console tab uh, does as well so you have these um, javascript files and this web application which renders on your browser right and um, in this case it's it's a web page or in this case it's the it's the search result page right and it's a it's it's a web page which 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 loads right and you can see all of the elements um here um on uh, the web page right you can look at any element which you let's say oh, i want this one and then that is this div right here right um once again don't be discouraged if the class if you know basic html and css then the class here and the js name if these look like these are random strings and like these don't make sense to you that's because this is not how the code was written this thing was generated through a framework which gener which uses random strings to assign particular attributes these are simply the same element being used again and again i mean not these ones but then this one is the same element being used again and again right so don't be worried if you don't understand like these strings um often when you use angular or react once your code compiles the output looks something like this it doesn't really make sense if you look at it directly but then if you see the angular version of the code on your ide it would make sense to see how this data is loading right um but the question becomes if you built a, a web application and you're or you're working on the ui right and you have a javascript file the javascript is the code right it's the interactive bit it's the it's the plug and play bit right so um if you like have a javascript file and then something you do on the page causes a bug or if the javascript file breaks like then what do you do right like if there's an error somewhere right like how do you know where it came from or what caused it or how to fix it right so i'd say approximately 50 percent of the time so i would say a good way to start looking at that is to look at the console right if you have any javascript errors um which pop which pop up they will come here and you will be able to see the error and some information about it hopefully you understand why that error occurred you know um, maybe look at stack overflow or and um, you know um, try and figure it out but then hopefully you under you understand like why the error occurred right but there is a fatal flaw of sorts in javascript development which i think i should tell you the thing is if a javascript file breaks in the middle right so let's say um let's say it's a kind of uh, it's a kind of uh thing where your flow of control exited a function and then didn't really hit anything else or something happened right um there is a high chance that your javascript issue whatever it may be does not result in an error on the console right so if you were writing code in java or c plus plus this usually means null pointers or segmentation faults right but then in javascript you could often press a button find it to be not working and then have no idea why it's not working because you have no errors on the console right um this is especially the case when a javascript file breaks in the middle while loading and so half your web page loads and half doesn't simply because like something broke in the middle and then you just have no errors there right so these um errors can uh, be debugged can is can can be debugged by writing multiple um 
print statements in the in every javascript function um in the flow of control and then looking at those print statements in the console they will get printed here and then trying to figure out where the flow of control um, stopped working or um, where the error um, is, is coming from. And then hopefully like you can fix that function. It's, it's not like obviously intuitive. And um, if you're a person who has no experience in UI design and like you just work on backend, then I'll you you're gonna have it in for you. You're probably gonna have a hard time learning UI because it's very tricky to debug errors. You don't even know where it's coming from half the time. So in such cases, it's a good idea to punctuate your code with print statements and see them here and um, basically try and figure out um, where or um, which uh, which function went wrong um but then uh that's about it i just kind of wanted to put this stuff out there because not everyone works on ui and some of this stuff might be interesting interesting to some people anyways uh i hope you guys enjoyed smash like subscribe um follow the youtube um, sorry, follow the, the follow the um, Facebook page because I post updates there regularly from my blog. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, though. Have a great day.